Hey everyone, it's Sarah, and today I am back to talk about 10 with an honorable mention, so kind of 11 uh, heavy hot weather fragrances. So these are 10 fragrances that I love to wear in the hot weather. There are a couple of them, maybe three of them, that I will wear all year round. Sometimes I'll wear them like in the cooler months, but typically I only wear these in the hot weather and they're pretty heavy scents. Um, they're pretty heavy hitter type fragrances. And yeah, I'm gonna jump right in. I know a lot of you guys were excited about this video, so um, I'm super excited to share these with you. Um, so we're gonna start with a pretty heavy perfume uh, right out of the gate, and that is this one here from Reminiscence, and this is called Reminiscence Patchouli. Um, I just saw this on the makeup website for $22, I think. It was so inexpensive. I love this scent. This is one of my most favorite patchouli scents I think I've ever smelled. It's kind of like, it's kind of like a chocolatey patchouli. It's sweet, it's smooth, it's earthy, but without being like a dirty earthy, it's like a, just like a really sweet, smooth, chocolatey uh, patchouli. It is fantastic. This one, I'll wear this one all year round, but I actually prefer it in the warmer weather. There's something about it that just blooms on your skin in warmer weather. It is beautiful. Um, so yeah, really, really inexpensive. This is such an underrated gem of a perfume. It's so, the quality of this, and this is supposedly, it's an eau de toilette. This thing performs like an X straight. It is super long lasting, just, I mean, incredible. The quality for the price on this one is one of the best I've ever, like, it's one of the best values I think I've ever seen in my life. I mean, the quality of this perfume is just fantastic. For such a small price, it's just amazing. So anyways, that is the first one that is Reminiscence Patchouli. Okay, this second one, this is one of the ones that I will wear any time of year, but I really prefer this in warmer weather. I just think it blooms in warmer weather. Um, this is Tom Ford Lost Cherry. I do have this, I do have the real thing because a beautiful subscriber um, sent this bottle to me. She had a baby and um, after she had a baby, her either her, her chemistry changed or her nose changed and she just, she had some really stunning perfumes that she couldn't tolerate anymore, which I totally understand. That happened to me too. Um, but this was one of them and I love this scent. This is the most beautiful, like boozy, like amaretto and cherry scent. That's what it smells like. It smells like a really good quality almond liqueur and cherry, sweet, divine cherry. It is so good. The dossier formulation of this is incredible too. It smells just like the original, but I love this scent in hot weather. I just think it blooms on the skin in hot weather. It just radiates off. It just radiates off the skin and it's, it's just stunning. It's such a beautiful scent. So very, very long lasting. You're going to get a good eight to 10 hours out of this one. Um, this is one of the longer lasting Tom Ford's that I've tried and I just really love it. I think it is stunning. I think it is a wonderful, um, heavy, hot weather scent. So anyways, that is Tom Ford Lost Cherry. Okay, this next one. This next one is not gonna be any surprise to any of you. I talk about this perfume all of the time. I will wear this any time of the year, but I particularly love it in the hot weather. In fact, I prefer it in hot weather over cold weather. Um, this is from Pascal Morabito, and this is called Sultan Ore. Um, this is pretty much a spot on dupe for the original Lancome poem. It's a sweet, syrupy floral. It's got a ton of orange blossom in it. It's got a lot of different notes in it, but it's got a lot of orange blossom in it, more orange blossom than anything. So I would probably consider it an orange blossom perfume, but it's very sweet, syrupy, uh, very like late 90s smelling. It smells like Lancome Poem, and it is absolutely stunning. Like the original formulation though, not the new formulation. Um, 
and it's just it's incredible it's such an amazing perfume this is like the reminiscence patchouli where this is like a 22 dollar bottle of perfume and i cannot recommend it enough the quality for the price with this perfume is phenomenal um it's just incredible you're this is a super long lasting perfume you're definitely going to get a good eight to ten hours out of this um, it lasts forever. It's another one of those perfumes that it just radiates off your skin in the heat. And it's fantastic. It is quite a heavy perfume for warm weather, but it is, it's so beautiful in warm weather. I just love it so much. So anyways, that is Pascal Morabito Sultan Ore. Okay, this next one, this is an Escada fragrance, and you would not think that this is a heavy perfume, but it is. This is another cherry fragrance, and um, this is a Scotta cherry in Japan. Oh, it's so beautiful. If you remember cherries in the air from years and years ago, I used to have a travel spray of that perfume, but um, I, I must have used it all up because I don't think I've got it anymore. But this is beautiful. This is like a fruity, juicy, kind of vanillic smelling cherry. It's not like a cough syrup smelling cherry at all. It's a, it's a sweet, syrupy, smooth, kind of vanillic cherry. It's really beautiful. If you remember Cherry in the Air, it's very, very similar to Cherry in the Air. Yeah, I'm, I used to remember what the differences were between this and Cherry in the Air because I had Cherry in the Air fresher in my mind, um, but since I don't, think I have it in my collection anymore, I cannot remember the difference. I remember it being a pretty subtle difference though. Um, like maybe, maybe cherry in the air was just a little bit more cherry forward if I remember. I just, I can't remember. But this to me is a pretty heavy scent. Um, in the heat, it does wear quite heavy, which I love. Um, it's like a heavy, it's a heavy fruity scent. It's really, really beautiful. I love this. Um, sadly, this one has been discontinued as well, and um, but I do think you can still find this. I think they still have it on the FragranceNet website, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, if I can find it, I will link it for you, but yeah, really, really beautiful, fun, heavy, fruity scent that I love in hot weather. So, and it's funny because I can't wear this in colder weather because something about it kind of makes me sick in colder weather. I can only wear it in the heat. Uh, so anyways, that is Escada Cherry in Japan. Okay, this next one, I just wore this perfume. Okay, this next one, I just wore this perfume like a week ago. Um, in fact, did I have it in my What I Wore Last Week video last week or the week before? I just wore this in the heat and I love this. It's such an incredible uh, perfume, but it's heavy. I mean, it's heavy in the winter time, but it's definitely heavy in the summertime. This is Pure Poison from Dior. And it's funny because I never used to think of this perfume as being a heavy perfume, but it's heavy. Um, when I wore it a couple weeks ago, I kept thinking about how almost cozy I felt in it because it is a heavy perfume, but it's perfect. You can wear this in the heat, you can wear it in the cold. It's actually heavier in the cold than it is in the heat. Um, and it performs better on me in the cold than it does in the heat, but I still get, it doesn't matter. I'll get eight, 10, 12 hours out of this perfume, no matter when I wear it. But I love this. This is a clean, soapy orange blossom scent and it's phenomenal. Um, this is the original formulation. If you want a bottle of the original formulation, you are gonna have to look on like Mercari or eBay. I found mine on Mercari. I just looked on Mercari a couple days ago to see if they had any more bottles of this and there are people selling them. Um, there are people selling them for as low as like $75, so which I think is a great price for an, a bottle of an original formulation. Um, but yeah, this is beautiful. It's a it's a clean, soapy, but heavy orange blossom, and I love how this wears in the summertime. It's a very, very cozy fragrance. So anyways, that is a Dior Pure Poison. This next one, I wear this one. I've got this, and I've also got the Absolute formulation, and this is the one that I wear in the heat. This is Chloe Nomad, just the original Chloe Nomad, and this is a heavy scent. I love it, and this is what I wear in the 
warm months and then in the cold months I wear the Absolute. The Absolute is a little bit more syrupy smelling and this one's a little bit more, um, I don't want to say clean because it's not like a clean smelling perfume but it's cleaner than the Absolute. I love this. I love this perfume in the heat. It's so classy smelling, quite a unique perfume and it's heavy and I love that about it. So this one is like Mirabelle and oh I forget what else is in it. I, the, only, the only thing I can usually remember from these perfumes is they both have Mirabelle and they both have oak moss in them. So they're kind of considered a Shepra. They're stunning. They are stunning perfumes and they are heavy and a lot of people will tell you that they're quite heavy perfumes but in the heat this one is absolutely stunning. This is a one spray and you're done. You will smell like this for 12, 14 hours. You will smell like this forever. It is such a long lasting perfume. So anyways that is Chloe Nomad, just the original Chloe Nomad. Okay, this next one, this is another one that I only wear this in warm weather, but this is quite a heavy scent on me. Um, this is from Valentino, and this is uh, Donna Aqua, Valentino Donna Aqua. This is so beautiful. This is pear and almond and hawthorn in the base. It is sweet and syrupy and super decadent smelling. You almost get the same, um, you almost have the same experience with this fragrance as you would with a fragrance that's got like caramel or praline in the base of it. It's that syrupy and sweet smelling. It is so stunning. It is very, very sweet though. Um, this might be one of the sweetest perfumes in my collection. The Hawthorne in the base though does ground it a little bit. So, so it does keep it from, being from being sickening oh my gosh i love this fragrance i cherish this bottle with my life because this fragrance has gotten so hard to find and when you do find it it has gotten so expensive that i just cherish this and i love these bottles i love the bottles that have like the old the this like studded design I think that they're so beautiful. Um, I'm really glad that when they started changing, when they started discontinuing perfumes and when they started changing their bottles, I was so glad to see that they went with like the spiky version because I just love it. But anyways, this is a beast of a fragrance. Um, it's not like a 10, 12 hour type fragrance, but you'll definitely get a good six to eight hours. And when it's really hot out, you'll get even more time because it's one of those perfumes that just hangs around forever, puts you in a scent bubble, radiates off your skin, and it's just, it's stunning. So anyways, this is Valentino Donna Aqua. Okay, this next one, this is actually a K. Alley fragrance. Ugh, I wish this perfume lasted longer because it is the most beautiful, like heavy white floral and coconut fragrance. This is from K. Alley and this is called Utopia Vanilla Coco 21. And oh my gosh, this is beautiful. This has the most beautiful warm coconut in it. The coconut in this fragrance is like the coconut in my um, The Sage Lifestyle Onyx oil. It's a dark coconut. It's a dark, kind of slightly nutty coconut. This is sweet, but it's not overly sweet. And it's a white floral, but it's not an overly, like the white florals aren't, um, I don't know, the white florals don't take over the coconut and the coconut doesn't take over the white florals and there's the most beautiful vanilla base to all of it. This is a stunning perfume. It is so well blended, it is so well done. In my opinion, this is one of the best from K. Alley that I've smelled. Oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. And the way that this one sits on the skin is fantastic. Sadly, I can only get maybe two hours out of this fragrance if I'm lucky. It is so fleeting on me. So I need to give this one another test though this year because my liquid appears to have darkened up a ton. So I'm hoping that because the liquid's darkened up, maybe it's like 
I don't know, maybe it's macerated more and maybe it will last longer on me, but this is beautiful and it's quite a heavy fragrance for summer. Um, it's definitely one of the lighter fragrances on this list, but it's still quite a heavy fragrance and I love it. It is beautiful. So anyways, that one is Kayali Ut Utopia Vanilla Cocoa 21. Okay, this next one, this is another coconut almond milk uh, fragrance and this is a heavy perfume. You would not know it from the bottle, uh, but this is the fragrance from Dolce & Gabbana and this is Dolce & Gabbana Garden. Um, and you wouldn't know it with that name either. This to me screams like light spring, clean, watery floral. This is not. Um, this is heavy, syrupy, almond milk, coconut. It's really, really sweet. It does have some florals in the middle and you do get a little bit of the florals, but you mostly just get that almond milk and coconut. And this is heavy. It's heavy and syrupy and kind of like the Donna Aqua, it's got, it doesn't have caramel or praline in it, but the way that it wears on your skin, it wears like a perfume that has caramel or praline in the base. It's sweet, it's syrupy, it's heavy, it's warm. It is fantastic. This one is actually one of the heavier ones on this list, especially on me. Whenever I wear this one, even the Dolce Peony, um, the one in the purple bottle that I usually wear in the springtime, even that wears quite heavy on my skin, which I love, don't get me wrong, but there's something about these that are so syrupy that they're just heavy wearing fragrances, which, um, is right up my alley because I'm always looking for a heavy fragrance. So anyways, this one lasts forever too. You can get a good eight, 10, 12 hours out of this. I usually overspray um, and I'm done for the day. I will smell like this still the next morning uh, because I do overspray. But yeah, I love this. It's one of my favorite like heavy summertime, syrupy sweet fragrances. It almost leans gourmand. Almost. If there wasn't that like slight bit of a sweet floral aspect in the middle of this, this would be a full-on gourmand scent. So anyways, that is Dolce & Gabbana Dolce Garden. So beautiful. Okay, and then last but not least before my honorable mention, um, I could not leave this fragrance out. This is Kim Kardashian uh, Pure Honey. And this is, this is perfection. This is such a beautiful, sweet, not dark, but heavy, sweet, syrupy, slightly heavy, honeyed, white floral. Every time I talk about this perfume, I have to tell you guys it reminds me of something from my childhood, um, whether it was another perfume or some kind of a toy or just something that I smelled somewhere in my childhood in the 80s. This remind it, this is like a scent memory of, of something, and I absolutely adore this. It is um, it is quite heavy on the honey, so if you're not a honey person or if honey fragrances don't work on you, I would definitely sample this one first. Um, you can pick up a bottle of this for like twelve dollars on uh, Fragrance Net. It is, in my opinion, one of the best celebrity scents. This one is wonderful to wear on its own, but it's also amazing to layer with. You can layer this with a coconut perfume and you're gonna get something like the Kaali. It's just sweet, syrupy, honeyed white florals. I love this scent. It is just incredible. Such a good, underrated gem. And it is quite heavy in the heat, which I love. It's just such a good one. So anyways, that is Kim Kardashian Pure Honey. And then the honorable mention that I had to include is this one here. This is an oil that was sent over from a beautiful fragrance friend, Tatiana. And this is a fragrance called, um, I forget who makes this, but it's called Child Perfume. It's, I think it's like Sue. Yeah, I cannot for the life of me remember the lady's name, but this perfume oil, Oh my gosh, it is, this is the most beautiful like indolic tuberose and jasmine scent. If you like perfumes like Sand and Sable, like the Jennifer Aniston, the original perfume, if you like fragrances like that, you would love this. Um, but what I love about this oil is it's heavy. 
It's not light and airy like the Jennifer Aniston. This is like a heavy hitter oil. You only need to dab this around a little bit, um, let it warm on your skin, and then you are going to be radiating the most beautiful, almost kind of slightly indolic jasmine and tuberose. It almost has a greenness to it too that you can smell like when you take, a, you know, when you breathe it in and it gets to that kind of end point of being able to smell it, there's almost this greenness to it. It's beautiful, I love this. Um, Sand and Sable is quite a heavy summer scent as well. Um, that's what I love about those old 80s beach perfumes is because they, yeah, they're beach fragrances, but they're still heavy and I love that and that's what this one smells like. It is so good. So in the end, this thing is a beast. You will smell like this for two days if you didn't take a shower. Like you would smell like this forever. Um, but I do love this perfume and I had to talk about this one because I left it out of my tuberose perfume and I perfume video and I cannot believe I did that uh, because it's such a perfect like jasmine tuberose combination. It is fantastic. Uh, more tuberose than jasmine though. So anyways, that is a uh, child perfume oil. And that is gonna be it, guys. Those are 10 heavy summer perfumes that I have in my collection that I love to wear in the heat. Um, let me know if you guys want a part two because I could probably do a part two to this because I gravitate towards uh, heavy fragrances all year round. Um, they're ju that's just what I prefer. But I do hope that you all enjoyed this. If you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave and I will see you in my next one. Bye.